Hi, my name is Itzel Villegas. And I'm Sean Leathery. And I'm Sandra Granados. And I'm Melissa Sandoval. And we are in the Professor Nathani's Chemistry 2 class, and this is our group project. Today we'll be discussing a timeline of the human understanding of diabetes. So what is diabetes? Diabetes essentially is having too much glucose in your blood. Today we're going to present to you a timeline which dates from 1500 BC to the early 1920s on the many different foundings of how diabetes came about. The day that Eve decided to take a bite of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden was the first time that sugar had ever crossed human lips. This also began the human affliction that we call diabetes. In 1862, a German Egyptologist discovered what is the first known diabetes in an ancient papyrus that dated back to 1500 BCE. Graham Celsus, the Roman writer who lived during the Hippocrates in the 4th century BC. I translated the Greek writings on medicine and wrote a brief summary on surgery and medicine. I also informed other physicians with potential patients with diabetes to watch what you eat and exercise regularly. This, ad this advice that was rec recommended then is relevant because it's still advice that we offer today. Between the 5th and 6th century before Christ lived the Indian physician known as Dr. Shashruta. He noted in his studies that urine from people who were afflicted with diabetes had a honey-like taste and also that ants were attracted to it when he poured it around the ant pile. He was also one of the first physicians to recognize that there were two types of diabetes that affected people. One that affected the skinny and the young, and another that affected the obese and the sedentary. Today, we know these types of diabetes as type 1 and type 2. As we know, many great discoveries are just a product of chance, or just being in the right place at the right time. In 1889, Oscar Minkowski and his colleague wanted to know what role the pancreas played, if any, in the digestion of fat. For this experiment, they removed the pancreas from a dog. When they returned to the lab the next day, they found that the dog had urinated everywhere. Since Minkowski knew polyurea to be a symptom of diabetes, he decided to check the dog's urine for glucose. What he found surprised him. The pancreas wasn't involved in the digestion of fat. However, it was the primary organ involved in diabetes. In the early 1920s, Canadian scientists Frederick Bainting and Charles Best had an idea that would eventually unlock the major mystery related to the dreadful diabetes disease. In doing so, Charles and Frederick were working together in the laboratory of the University of Toronto and made up a pancreatic extract. Then a year later, the first experimental dose of insulin was injected into Leonard Thompson, who had diabetes at the age of 14. The biochemist who assisted Bainty and death reported that the injection worked amazingly and lowered his glucose levels within a day. Because of the unexpected discovery of insulin, Bainting and Bess were awarded the Nobel Prize for, in medicine for the discovery of insulin. Hi, I'm Wilford Brimley, and some of you may recognize me from talking about diabetes on TV for the last 20 years. Today, I wanted to talk to you some about some of the devices that have made it easier for people who have diabetes to cope with their situation. First. In the 1970s, we saw the portable glucose meter, which meant that people could test their glucose on their own without having to travel to the doctor. This is the way that it was primarily done before. 
Then, also in the 1970s, we saw the external insulin pump, which made it easier for people to manage their diabetes, especially those with difficult to control cases. Also, in 1986, we saw the first insulin delivery pen, which made it easier and less painful for those to inject themselves with their insulin. In 1970, high fructose corn syrup was replacing sugar and was now being used in just about everything we consume today. I will now show you a demonstration of what fructose corn syrup looks like after we consume a beverage that has high fructose corn syrup and its primary ingredient. Hi, we're going to boil 20 ounces of soda to see how much corn fructose is in it. As you can see, the soda is starting to boil. I added a second bottle, 20 ounces of soda, and it's still boiling. The goal is to see how much corn fructose and chemicals are in the 40 ounces of soda. What's left, it's getting thicker. You can see how much corn fructose and chemicals are left. So thanks to the discoveries of Celsius, Minkowski and Shashruta, Bainting and Best, we now have a better understanding of what diabetes is today.